it's digital radiography and types of digital imaging systems okay so you what you use in your labs is your digital imaging system so when we are talking about some of these aspects most of them you will be applying it during the practical labs but you have to have more knowledge of what you are doing okay so this digital radiography has been used in dentistry since 1987 and it has improved tremendously during this time so as you know for any technologies from the starting to the present condition there is a lot of advancements it's like the computer when the computer was first invented it occupied a big room with all the generators processors all those things but now if you see the computer has become so sleek that it can be like a notepad an ipad all those things so that's technology as the time advances you get more improvements with the same uh, technology okay so when digital radiography is discussed the term digital images is used instead of radiographs, X-ray films, or the films. Okay, so for a conventional radiography, we say the term radiographs or films or X-ray films. Okay, for the digital radiography, we usually say it is digital images. Okay, digital images. Now, the digital images are not radiographs as you see on the films but they are electronic signals that are captured by the sensors so as you see in the lab you place the sensor inside the patient's oral cavity the sensors are going to capture some signals okay and they are going to be displayed on the computer monitor almost instantly okay so these images can be emailed to insurance companies and other dentists for consultations so hard copies of these images can be printed on image quality paper or it can be saved if you want to save the uh, if you want to practice a paper free dentistry you can also provide the soft copies uh, for the same details okay so basically, it is more convenient than the normal X-ray film technology that we had been used previously. Okay, so the normal X-ray machine that we use for exposing the conventional images, the same can be applied for the digital radiography as well. Now, the position of the image receptor, that is sensor or PSP in the mouth, is identical to the positioning with the film. So if you consider X-ray film or the sensors, okay, both of these are going to have similar positioning. So what is go the main difference? The main difference is that film is thin and it can be adapted according to the contour of the arch contour of the arch means shape of the arch okay whereas the sensors they are rigid they are thick so they cannot be adapted to the contour of the arch okay in addition we have to follow strict infection control measures for the use of sensors okay for the use of sensors because sensors cannot be sterilized, okay? Sensors cannot be sterilized or disinfected. So what we have to do, we have to do a double barrier protection, okay? That means strict infection control measures, including fluid impervious barriers. Impervious means which cannot pass through. So fluid should not pass through the barrier that we are using. So the first one that we use is the plastic cover sleek, the sleek cover. And then we put on the 
glove okay so always ensure double barrier protection okay so double barrier protection is always safer than the single barrier one especially uh, when pandemics like corona and all are around you are supposed to use more precautionary measures okay so uh, the sensors and this psp plate so psp means it's phosphor storage plate okay we will discuss about that in the uh, further slides it is also a kind of sensor okay so the sensors or the psp plates are reused every time okay that means that it is not like the x-ray films once you take the exposure then you are going to uh, view the image either you save the patient's radiograph in your file or if the patient requests or has come from an external source for taking the radiograph you send it away with the patient but in this case it's not like that you are going to reuse the sensors okay again and again so these sensors they cannot tolerate heat very important point okay which can be asked for your exams the sensors how do you sterilize a sensor or how do you provide infection control for a sensor it is always through the fluid impervious barrier protection okay fluid impervious barrier protection now step-by-step -step procedures for the use of digital radiography it may vary by manufacturers okay so it you have to always follow the manufacturer's instruction booklet for information concerning the operating of the system equipment preparation patient preparation and exposure factors that is more suitable for the sensors that you have purchased okay so the type of digital imaging systems we have direct imaging and indirect imaging systems so in direct digital imaging we use a solid state sensor as the image receptor so it contains an extra extra sensitive silicon chip with an electronic circuit embedded in the silicon so what do you understand by this the ones that we use in the lab it's a kind of direct imaging it's called as a solid state sensor okay so you might have um, you might be knowing about the term sensor because we use it all the time in the lab but it's more specifically called as a solid state sensor so this solid state sensor that we use it is sensitive to x-rays yes that's why we are using that for the imaging so what makes it sensitive here is the silicon chip okay so in the extra films if you remember it is a silver halide crystals they are sensitive to the x-ray photons here the silicon chip is sensitive to the x-rays and they have an electronic circuit inside the silicon chip which is going to transmit electronic signals to the viewing monitor or desktop okay so two major type of sensors are used in direct digital imaging one is called as complementary metal oxide semiconductor and the other is ccd charged coupled device okay the one that we use is cmos complementary metal oxide semiconductor okay the most commonly uh, used digital receptor is a CCD, which is also used in some extra oral imaging systems, such as panoramic and cone beam volumetric imaging. Okay, so panoramic imaging is a kind of two dimensional imaging of all the structures of maxillary and mandibular region. Okay, and cone beam imaging is a three dimensional imaging. So both of these are again digital imaging okay so they are using they can they can be seen using uh, mainly the ccd type of sensor charged coupled device okay so these are the two type of sensors uh, that we have in direct digital imaging okay now some ccds are wireless that means there is no 
wire attached, as you can see in this diagram. Okay, some CCDs are having no wire attachment, and the others they have a cable, as you can see, a cable attached to the sensor. Okay, so the wireless type of sensor uses radio frequency transmission. Okay, so how do they transmit the uh, the information from uh, the patient's uh, structures after exposure? It's through the radio frequency transmission. So with the, after taking the radiographic exposure, the images are going to be instantly seen on the monitor because of the radio frequency transmission, which means that they are going to use radio waves in transmitting the data. Okay, so you have wireless sensor and wired sensors in direct digital imaging. Okay, so parts of a CMOS sensor, the complementary metal oxide semiconductor sensor. Okay, so it has a front housing, that means the front cover, then a back housing, that is the uh, rear housing, it's called as a back cover. You can see a wire. Uh, starting from the back cover okay back side or the rear housing okay now number two is the electronic chip okay that is a silicon uh, electronic chip that we are going to uh, have in the cmos which is going to produce electronic signals okay then the number four number four is a layer called as scintillator okay scintillator has similar functions like your intensifying screens okay so what does intensifying screen do so that's a question to all of you what does an intensifying screen do yes asma badur fatima what does an intensifying screen do Are you here? Asma, Badur, Fatima? Yes. So what does an intensifying screen do? You can type in the answers. Intensifying screen in X-ray films. What does it do? Where is Asma? Asma is not here. Okay, let me help you. I'll give you the options. So which one is the answer for intensifying screen? Bidur, Fatima, and Asma. Is it A, it converts X-rays into visible light, or B, it converts visible light into X-rays? Mm -hmm. OK, anyone has an answer? Lama A. OK. So, uh, Sharifa, please ask Asma to mail me the reason of she being present or logged in online and uh, not answering the self-assessment. Okay. So, the answer is A. It converts x-rays into visible light. Okay. So, that is the function of an intensifying screen. Okay. So, here... Uh, we have a scintillator, that is the fourth layer that you can see here. So this has a similar function as the intensifying screen that we use in extra oral imaging. Okay, so extra oral film based imaging. 
So scintillator, it mainly takes up the X-rays and it converts that into visible light signals. Okay, so the visible light signals are the one which is going to uh, expose or give majority of the information towards the second layer, that is the electronic chip. Okay, then you see the fifth layer, that is the fiber optic plate. Okay, so this fiber optic plate makes sure that no X-rays are going to pass through the sensors the scintillator through reach the electronic chip, okay? So X-rays interaction with electronic chip is not the one that we use. We are going to um, convert the X-rays into visible light photons, which is going to provide information about the image, okay? So scintillator, it takes up X-rays and converts that into visible light then the fiber optic plate it will prevent any passage of x-rays to reach the electronic chip then number six okay uh, that is a sensor cmo sensor so sensors are sensitive to visible light than the x-rays okay so if x-rays directly falls on the sensors it's going to get uh, damaged very soon because they are sensitive to the visible light. Okay, so here what happens is when X-rays falls on uh, the sensors. Okay, for example, you you place a coin and you take the radiograph. So on the area of the coin, there is little interaction of X-ray photon with the sensor. Okay, but the other areas, there will be interaction of X-ray photons with the sensor. So what happens as soon as the X-ray goes into the front housing, it reaches the scintillator. So here it converts the X-ray photons into visible light. Then number five, the fiber optic plate makes sure that no X-rays are going to pass through the this layer, okay? So only visible light is going to pass through this layer, okay? So this fiber optic plate, it in a, in a way acts like a filter. Now six, it's a sensor, CMO a sensor. So here, the sensors are sensitive to the visible light signals. So what do they do? They take up these visible lights and convert that into electronic signals, okay? So these electronic signals is sent to the electronic chip, and this electronic chip carries information through the wire to the CPU of the system, computer uh, system, that is the central processing unit, there it gets converted into the uh, digital images okay so there is one process called as analog to digital conversion which you need not know but the layers of the sensor it is good to know uh, and you have again the functions of each layer which just we just now discussed okay so um, front housing it contacts the patient so it has it should have a comfortable design electronic chip it transmits electronic signals to the computer rare housing it has a protective shield to prevent the back scanner that means that it is lined by lead okay any material which can prevent the back scatter means it is lined by lead okay back scatter means back scattered radiation that is radiation that is hitting on patients other structures and coming back into the sensor which can compromise the quality of the sensor and of course, again, exposure to the patient. So we do not want that. So we usually provide a uh, back housing, which can prevent the back scatter. So it is like the lead foil, the function of the lead foil. It prevents the back scattering in the X-ray film. So similarly, the rare housing also has a protective layer, uh, which is going to help prevent the back scatter. Okay. So parts of the CMO sensor again continued. We have the scintillator, which converts the X-ray beam into the visible light. So this has similar functions like the intensifying screens that we use in the extra oral imaging. Then the fiber optic plate, it transmits the light, that is the visible light converted by the scintillator precisely
to the CMOS sensor surface. Okay, so it also reduces the noise. Noise means it is uneven densities on the image. Okay, any uneven signals which can compromise the quality of the image, it will reduce that. The fiber optic plate was going to reduce such visible light signals. Okay, and this will help to give a clear image. Now, CMO sensor, it converts the visible light into electronic signals. And then the electronic signals are transmitted towards the CPU directly by the uh, sensing system, cable system. Okay. Now, the other type of imaging is the indirect digital imaging. Okay. Indirect digital imaging or it can also be called as semi digital imaging okay indirect digital imaging or semi digital imaging that means it has half the qualities of digital imaging and half the qualities of the x-ray film imaging okay so what does it do so the sensors that we use here it's called as the phosphor storage plate okay phosphor storage plate sensor or you can say the PSP system okay so uh, the imaging with this phosphor storage plate that is what we are going to discuss in the indirect digital imaging systems so uh, available in the size of a conventional x-ray film that means 0 1 2 3 4 sizes are available in the PSP plates as well coated with phosphor crystals okay so if you remember in the x-ray based film imaging we have extra oral radiographs we have intensifying screens for exposing these extra oral films okay so the intensifying screens the main component is phosphorus that is why it can take up the x-rays and convert that into visible light, okay? So the same uh, material of intensifying screen, the phosphor, it is used in the indirect digital imaging system. That is why the name phosphor storage plate. In the direct one, we use the silicon chip, okay? We have two types. We have uh, complementary metal oxide semiconductor, that is CMOS, and charge couple device that is CCD. But here, the main component is phosphorus. Okay. So the quality of this type of sensor is that it stores the energy of the X ray photons for some time. So it's like the X ray film imaging. So once you expose the radiograph, the information in the film, once you expose the film, the information in the film is stored in the film until you process the film. So until the time you process it, it's called as the latent image, which is invisible. So when you do the processing, this invisible latent image is going to convert it into visible, very lucent and radio opaque structures, which we call it as the radiograph. Okay. So in this case, here also, this PSP plate is going to get exposed to radiation. The PSP plate also has the latent image, okay, until the time it is going to be processed. So here, it is not going to undergo a chemical processing. It is going to undergo processing called as scanning, okay. It is going to undergo processing called as scanning, which scans the image from the PSP plate. Once you scan it, the information from the PSP plate is gone, okay? Then the PSP plate can be reused again. So the material that is used to scan is high intensity fiber optic light, okay? So if you want to understand what, is, what does this look like, it is like your Xerox machine or photocopy machine. So if you want to take a print, what happens? You place the paper or the certificate which has to be uh, copied on the Xerox machine, you close the lid. So a, a green light 
it flashes from one side of the paper to the other side of the paper, right? And then you get a print or a copy of the certificate which you wanted. So the same green light, it is called as the high intensity fiber optic light. So that is scanning the paper and giving you the print. In the same way, the PSP plates are put inside a scanner. The high intensity light is going to scan the information in the PSP plate and then give the image details on the monitor. Okay. So until the time the PSP plate is scanned, it will contain the latent image. So among the digital and the, uh, the digital indirect and the direct, the sensors which are able to store information is the PSP plates. Okay. CMOS and CCD will never store the information. Okay. It's a very important point. Right. Then a laser beam scanner is required to read the information, what we call the scanning stored on the PSP plate and it gets converted into a digital image. So the latent image will remain in the phosphor plate before the scanning phase for minutes to hours, depending upon the environment. Okay. So after exposure, the, ex the PSP plates will contain the invisible latent image. Okay. So once it is scanned, you will see the radiograph. It's like same like the X-ray film technology. X-ray films will have the latent image once the films are exposed to the radiograph. And then once the chemical processing is completed, you see the radiolucent and radiopaque areas on the radiograph. That is the image. You see it after processing. So until the time it is processed, both the X-ray films as well as the PSP plate sensors are going to have the latent image that means it stores the information okay so for infection control procedures for this type of sensors we have a barrier envelope okay so you are going to put the psd plate into this barrier envelope okay so the barrier envelope is sealed by removing the adhesive strip and pressing the envelope close so the yellow color that you see here is the adhesive strip so once you put the sensors inside this barrier envelope you are going to pull out this adhesive strip and close it okay so that the barrier is closed and then you are going to place it into the patient's mouth and expose the radio uh, radiographic film so here the imaging plate is protected and then it can be used intraorally once you provide the barrier so uh, the protective barrier placement, it can be seen here in the image. This is the barrier uh, and the PSP, as you can see here. So it's an example of a flow, dental, safe, and sure uh, dulex PSP envelope. Okay. So here, the yellow is the EZ glide insertion tab. That means from through which area your sensors are going to be inserted okay so after the easy glide tab makes plate insertion um, effortless okay so yellow is the area where you have to place the sensors inside once you place the sensors inside you're going to do the exposure and after exposure this is what happens okay so you're going to tear the envelope from the center so that it makes the opening very easily okay then you have another type of sensor also which can be torn with the help of a uh, thumb in the from the notch you have to reflect the uh, barrier cover back okay so um, two types of opening the barriers one is you are going to tear centrally and the other there will be a notch with the barrier paper uh, the barrier cover you're going to open it from the area of the notch okay that's how you open the barrier after the exposure now uh, the sensors okay that is the psp sensors in in that digital imaging 
they should not be exposed to bright light or warmth because this will release the energy before it is read by the scanner. So once you have taken the information from the patient's teeth, you should not expose the sensor to bright light or you should not place these sensors in a temperature in a high temperature area because this is going to uh, release the energy stored in this PSP sensor. That means that if you keep it like that, if you expose the sensor with the bright light or if you keep it in a warm place, it means that the latent image stored in the sensor is going to go away. Okay, so it's always advisable not to uh, expose the sensor to the bright light or not to keep in warmer areas. Now, after the plates are scanned, they are exposed to bright light that erases all remaining energy and the plates are ready to use again. Okay, so in this case of uh, indirect digital imaging, that are the ones that we use in the lab. So you know that you have a sensor, you expose the radiograph, immediately the image is displayed on the monitor. In the case of the PSP sensors, which is indirect imaging, we use the sensors, that is the PSP plates, take the exposure. These sensors does not have a wire attached to it. Okay, so you're going to do the exposure like your intraoral X-ray films. And after that, you are going to uh, scan these sensor. So once this is scanned, the information is displayed on the desktop or the monitor or the screen okay so once this is done these psp plates are exposed to the bright light so that all the remaining energy uh, or the information is removed from the plate and it can be reused again okay so this imaging plate is posted in the patient's mouth using the same positioning technique as the dental x-ray films whether it is the psp plate or it is the direct digital sensors the positioning is same like your extra films pertaining to each teeth okay so after exposure this imaging plate is carefully removed from the barrier and the lab placed in a scanner and after scanning the image is displayed on the computer okay so these plates cannot be autoclave no direct or indirect digital imaging systems cannot be autoclaved or sterilized okay so always you have to use the barrier protection so extreme care should be taken to handle these sensors to avoid scratches or dust okay so last week uh, during the lab practice uh, the students who were practicing after the time uh, the sensor placement into the sensor slot after practicing it was such that it is going to fall down so any such things happen, uh, it is not advisable to use sensors like that. Okay, when you use your sensors, it has to be with more care. Okay, you cannot just keep and go. You have to keep it properly in the slots for the sensors because if the sensors are dropped down on the floor, it is not going to be uh, able to be reused in many of the cases okay so always avoid scratches dust or breakage of these sensors okay it has to be handled with very much precaution now digitizing images so digitizing means to convert into digital so what are we going to convert into digital imaging the conventional imaging okay so film based radiographs it can be digitized for viewing on a computer, okay? That means you have an extra oral film, for example. You are going to scan this extra oral film and what you get on the monitor is a digital image, but what you have in your hand is your extra oral film, okay? So that is what is called as a digital digitizing images, okay? The conventional X-ray film is scanned with the help of a duplicator light box, okay? So what happens here is the film 
is placed in on a duplicate light box and it is scanned to get a digitized image so usually we have uh, this type of duplicated boxes for intraoral and extraoral radiographic images okay so this type of indirect digital imaging is slightly less detailed from the direct digital imaging okay so here always remember the radiograph has already been taken on the film okay and this film is going to get scanned which will give you the digital imaging there are softwares in the digital imaging okay we can alter the contrast brightness size of the image contrast means difference between the black and the white shades brightness of the image to make it more bright or less bright then image size that means zoom into the image or zoom out increase the sharpness inversion that means you can change the areas which are black into white and the areas which are white into black color okay pseudo color alteration you can also include colors in the image okay so some of them you can see it here then change the contrast in the first case pseudo color in the second case and inversion of images okay so advantages and disadvantages of digital radiography so advantage it is immediate viewing of the images in comparison to the x-ray films which has to be processed either manually or digitally okay so these direct digital uh, system they are going to provide immediate viewing without delay but if you consider the case of indirect digital imaging using the psp plates uh, there is some delay because of the scanning process, okay? It has less radiation to around 70 to 80 percentage in comparison to the X-ray films. No chemicals are used for processing. Ability to enhance images. You can alter the contrast, brightness, all these things of the images. Communication with other dentists. It can be sent via email to other dentists. Uh, no more lost films. The films can be lost or misplaced, but the digital images cannot be. So if you have the patient's file number or the card index number, which we call as ID number, then you can retrieve the information. Then remote consultation capability, or it can be applied in teledentistry, okay? Especially in situations like when, like the COVID pandemic, okay, where Teledentistry was one of the most common uh, things practiced during that period for patients to deal with emergencies or concerns. Okay, so uh, such digital images are available uh, for remote consultation. Okay, for teledentistry, transferring of the data and consultation. So this is not possible with the film-based dentistry. So disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? The cost, it is, it is highly, uh, what do you say? It has more cost than your film-based imaging system. So you have to have more precautions when you handle the sensors. Converting previous records to digital. So this is one area there where you have the problem. Because some of the records of the patient might be in the film based and some of them will be in the digital. If that occurs, it is difficult to convert the previous records into the digital ones. Then learning the computer software. So different uh, sensors uh, provided by the manufacturer will have different type of operate operations. Okay, so you have to always learn the computer software used with one particular type of sensor for example kodak company okay and uh, another company's name is uh, plan maker okay so the sensors used by both these companies will be uh, basically same if it's cmos 
it is going to be CMOS or CCD or PSD, whether any of these three, it is going to have some uh, variations in shape, uh, how much energy is needed to take the radiographic image, all those things, okay? Then thickness and rigidity of the sensors. That is one issue which makes it non-adaptable to the maxilla or mandible, okay? Then infection control has to be strictly followed in the cases of digital imaging systems, okay? So that ends the lecture for today.